Good evening, God's Prayer Warriors. Brother Felix here. And tonight we're going to continue reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 through verses 22. Again, we're going to continue reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 22. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I give you thanks for today. I give you thanks for my life. I give you thanks for my beautiful wife, Teresa, and my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I give you thanks for loving and forgiving us, Lord. I give you thanks for all your prayer warriors and all my brothers and sisters that watch this video. Lord Jesus, I ask what I always ask. In your name, may there be at least one verse for each one of our ears in tonight's reading. That would be two verses per head. And when we hear these verses spoken, may the Holy Spirit be stirred up inside of us. And may we have the courage to apply these verses to our lives. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alright brothers and sisters, let's get right into it. Exodus chapter 3. Moses and the burning bush. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face, because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed I, ha, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. And I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This 
is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. Go assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. And I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed toward this people, so that when you leave, you will not go empty-handed. Every woman is to ask her neighbor and any living, and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing, which you will put on your sons and daughters, and so you will plunder the Egyptians. These are the words of our Lord our God, brothers and sisters. Let's break down some of these verses together. Verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. What a contrast between Moses' life as an Egyptian prince and his life as a Midianite shepherd. As a prince, he had everything done for him. He was the famous son of of an Egyptian princess. As a shepherd, he had to do everything for himself. He was holding the he was holding the very job he had been taught to despise. As you read about in Genesis chapter forty three, verse thirty two, and Genesis chapter forty six, verse thirty two through thirty four. And he lived as an unknown foreigner. What a humbling experience this must have been for Moses. But God was preparing him for leadership. Living the life of a shepherd and nomad, Moses learned about the ways of the people he would be leading and also about life in the desert. Moses couldn't appreciate this lesson, but God was getting him ready to free Israel from Pharaoh's grasp. Mount Horeb is another name for Mount Sinai, where God would give the people his revealed law. As you read in Where he would give him his revealed law. As you read in three, chapter 3, verse 12. Now verses 2 through 4. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw... That though the bush was on fire, 
it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, Here I am. God spoke to Moses from an unexpected source, a burning bush. When Moses saw it, he went to investigate. God may use unexpected sources when communicating to us. Whether people, thoughts, or experiences. Be willing to investigate and be open to God's surprises. Moses saw a burning bush and spoke with God. Many people in the Bible experience God in visible, not necessarily human form. Abraham saw the smoking fire pot. And blazing torch, as you read about in Genesis chapter 15, verse 17. Jacob wrestled with a man, as we read in Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 through 29. When the slaves were freed from Egypt, God led them by pillars of cloud and fire, as you read about in chapter 13, verse 17 through 22. God made such appearances to encourage his new nation, to guide them, and to prove the reliability of his verbal message. Verses 5 and 6. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. At God's command, Moses removed his sandals and covered his face. Taking off his shoes was an act of reverence, conveying his own unworthiness before God. God is our friend, but he is also our sovereign Lord. To approach him frivolously shows a lack of respect and sincerity. When you come to God in worship, do you approach him casually or do you come as though you were invited guest before as or do you come as though you were an invited guest before a king? If necessary, Adjust your attitude so it is suitable for approaching a holy God. Verse 8. So I have come down to rescue them from the land of the Egyptians and bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites. The home of the Canaanites is the land of Israel and Jordan today. Canaanites was a term for all the various tribes living in that land. Verse 10. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Moses made excuses because he felt inadequate for the job God asked him to do. It was natural for him to feel that way. He was inadequate all by himself. But God wasn't asking Moses to work alone. He offered other resources to help. God himself, Aaron, and the ability to do miracles. God often calls us to tasks that seem too difficult. But he doesn't ask us to do them alone. God offers us his resources, just as he did to Moses. We should not hide behind our inad inadequacies, as Moses did, but look beyond ourselves to the great resources available. Then we can allow God to use our unique contributions. Verses 13 through 15. Moses said to God, Suppose I go 
to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they asked me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. The Egyptians had many gods by many different names. Moses wanted to know God's name so the Hebrew people would know exactly who had sent him to them. God called himself I Am, a name describing his eternal power and unchangeable character. In a world where values, morals, and laws change constantly, we can find stability and security in our unchanging God. The God who appeared to Moses is the same God who can live in us today. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says, God is the same yesterday and today and forever. Because God's nature is stable and trustworthy, we are free to follow and enjoy him rather than spend our time trying to figure him out. Yahweh is derived from the Hebrew word for I am. God reminded Moses of his covenant promises to Abraham that we read about in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 and 3 and Genesis chapter 15 and Genesis chapter 17. Also, his promises made uh, made to Isaac that we read about in Genesis chapter 26, verse 2 through, through 5. And the promises he made to Jacob in Genesis chapter 28, verses 13 through 15. And use the name I am to show his unchanging nature. What God promised to the great patriarchs hundreds of years earlier he would fulfill through Moses. Verse 16 through 17. Go assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. God told Moses to tell the people what he saw and heard at the burn burning bush. Our God is a God who acts and speaks. One of the most convincing ways to tell others about him is to describe what he has done and how he has spoken to his people. If you are trying to explain God to others, talk about what he has done for you. For people you know. Or for people whose stories are told in the Bible. Amen. A land flowing with milk and honey is a poetic word picture expressing the beauty and productivity of the promised land. Verses 18 through 20. The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. The leaders of Israel would accept God's message and the leaders of Egypt would reject it. God knew what both reactions would be before they happened. This is more than good 
psychology. God knows the future. Any believer can trust his or her future to God because God already knows what is going to happen. And verse 22, brothers and sisters. Every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing, which you will put on your sons and daughters. And so you will plunder the Egyptians. The jewels and clothing were not merely borrowed. They were asked for and easily received. The Egyptians were so glad to see the Israelites go that they sent them out with gifts. These items were used later in the building of the tabernacle. They read about in chapter 35, verse 5 and 22. The promise of being able to plunder the Egyptians seemed impossible to Moses at this time. Great reading, my brothers and sisters. This is actually something that I've read many times before. Um, but still a, a great reading. I hope um, if any of you guys are hearing this for the first time, this reading, that uh, you know you guys picked up some, some key verses out of here. And uh, if you have read this before, I hope it's just a refresher of how great God is. Brothers and sisters, let's end in prayer. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just want to thank you for tonight's reading. I want to give praise, thanks, and glory to the great I Am. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for everything that you do for us daily. Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive my sins and the sins of everybody that watches this video. I ask that you forgive us of our sins. That you give us a discerning heart. That you fill us with your Holy Spirit and remove any evil inside of us and destroy the evil. I ask that you keep us healthy, happy, and safe, that you continue to lead us, teach us, guide us, and protect us. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you heal us of any sicknesses, diseases, viruses, diabetes, cancers, arthritis, degenerative back disc disease, blood clots, any infections, any organs that aren't working correctly. Anything that's causing us pain or making us sick, whether it is physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. I ask in the name of Jesus that you break chains of addiction. Whether the addiction is in us or someone we love. I ask in Jesus' name that you break chains of addiction of smoking, of drinking, of drugging, of lusting, of money, of power, of greed. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you break chains of sin. If there's any sins that we enjoy doing, I ask if we choose to do them that the Holy Spirit convicts us heavy in our heart and makes us feel sick in our stomach until we repent and turn away from these sins. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect all your prayer warriors and their loved ones. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect uh, my mother, that you heal her of her knee pain that she has. My grandmother, that you heal her of her knee pain that she has. I ask that you bless you and protect my sisters Elizabeth and, and Yvette. That you bless you and protect uh, Sophie Borge. That you prepare her for her next procedure. That you continue to fill her with your Holy Spirit and, and fill her father and her mother and her brothers with your Holy Spirit. I ask that you bless you and protect my Uncle Oscar. That you fill him with your Holy Spirit and, and that you take away any infection that's in his blood. Right now I just ask for healing over 
my uncle Oscar I ask that you just fill him with your Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit just heal his entire body right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I ask that you bless him and protect Ma Mrs. Betty Payne that you heal her, her of her knee problem I ask that you bless him and protect and comfort prayer warrior brother Vince Lawrence that you continue to fill him and his family with your Holy Spirit and give him comfort as they mourn the, the loss of his older brother. I ask that you bless you and protect prayer warrior Ryan, Ryan's mother. That you fill her with your Holy Spirit and that you heal her. I ask that you bless you and protect Delia. That you fill her with your Holy Spirit and, and heal her of anything that's causing her sick. That's making her sick. Heal her of anything that, that that's, that's causing her worry. Or creating any problems or any pain for her. I ask that you bless you and protect Henry Tim. Ricky Joel Alvarez. As you continue to, to lead prayer warriors, Mondo Guzman. I ask that you restore families. That you restore broken hearts. I ask that, that you reunite fathers with their children and mothers with their children. I ask that you do not let no court separate families. I ask that if your prayer warriors have the courage to, to lay down our, 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 our problems, our legal problems at your feet, Lord. And, and if we're praying and, and applying your scripture daily, I ask that you resolve them, Lord. If it is your will. I ask that. Uh, that you are with my mother's aunt. Connie. That you. Take her away from the pain. That she's in. As she has entered hospice. I ask that you go ahead and. And take away the pain that she's in Lord. That you call her home. That you give her peace. That you give her her new heavenly body and mind. That you give her the love that, that you're going to give all of us one day when we stand in your presence Lord. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect everyone at the Kingdom Music Family Ministry, everyone at St. Paul's Lutheran Hope Lutheran Church in Aurora, and everyone at the House of Rest Church in Modesto, California. I especially ask you to bless, heal, and protect Brother Brian Trejo and his wife and children, Pastor Angel Morales and his wife and children, and Pastors David and Angel Rocha and their wives and children. I love you and I thank you. I just thank you for all the blessings that you give us, Lord. And in your name I pray. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, I hope you guys are having a great night. I love you guys. And we will continue reading. God bless you.